Today, I wanted to talk about cosplay. More specifically, plus size cosplay, and a list of ideas and concepts that if you are a plus size female presenting person, you might be interested in. I'm doing this video because there's not that many plus size characters out there, and sometimes it can be really hard to think of cosplays that would actually suit your body, or that they're characters that you would actually look like. In this video, I'm going to present to you three lists of cosplay concepts for plus size females. Um, list number one is going to be specific characters. List number two is going to be characters that you could do original designs for. And list number three is just going to be some sort of general, these are the type of costumes that I tend to feel do well for plus size ladies. But before I go into the list of ideas, I do want to say that Cosplay is meant to be fun, cosplay is meant to be enjoyable, and cosplay has no limits. I don't care about race, gender, height, stature, anything like that. Just cosplay what you want. I mean, I cosplay a heck of a lot of love life stuff, and I am uh, not a petite, like, 14 year old. Who cares? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're having fun. For the list of actual specific characters. I do have it all written on my phone because I have the memory of a goldfish and that's kind of offensive to goldfish, honestly. So I'm going to be just reading them off here and as I said, reference picture right there. So, in no particular order, we have Penelope, Penelope Featherington from Bridgerton, Pam from Archer. Gotta love some Pam. I really love Pam. Pam's the best. Ursula from The Little Mermaid, Donna from Parks and Recreation, Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray, Willa Dean Dixon from Dumpling, Fiona as an ogre from Shrek, Ellie from Borderlands 2, Talia aka the plus size one of the Muses from Disney's Hercules, the matchmaker or if you wanted to have some fun the ugly concubines from Mulan, the witch of the waste or old Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle, Tasty from Orange is the New Black, Glimmer or Spinnerella from she and the Princesses of Power. The Fairy Godmother from Disney Cinderella. Triss from Tamora Pierce's Circle of Magic books. And as an aside, if you cosplay any book characters from any of Tamora Pierce's books, I will love you forever. Just book cosplays, book cosplays, book cosplays, yeah. <clears throat> and then another book cosplay, Lady Sybil from Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Again, just my heart. Two of the fairies from Disney Sleeping Beauty, Flora and Merryweather, are different body types but both plus size. Bobby Draper from The Expanse. A whole bunch of characters from Steven Universe are plus size. The ones that immediately come to mind are Garnet, Amethyst and Rose Quartz, but there's lots of others and again a variety of different larger body types. Then we have Abby or Patty from the 2016 Lady Ghostbusters. And last but not least, Tilly from Star Trek Discovery. That is obviously not a comprehensive list of plus size female characters out there, but it was more than I found when I was kind of searching for plus size cosplay suggestions, because yeah, sometimes I want to cosplay a character who does have a body and a face and everything like mine, and it's kind of hard to find actual characters, hence why I thought I'd do this. But yeah. As you saw, those characters range from being plus size only by like Hollywood standards, so they're really just average ladies, right up to much more heavy set characters. And you know, wherever you fall on the spectrum, as I said, cosplay's fun. Cosplay someone skinnier than you, cosplay someone fatter than you. Who gives this shit? Just have fun. But anyway, I hope that that list of specific characters gave you some ideas of cosplays of recognizable individuals that you could do. I've actually cosplayed two of the characters from that list myself. I did Pam from Archer, and that's the Sports Illustrated swimsuit, uh, like, drawing that was just not actually in the show, but I love that outfit, I love that shoot, it's one of my favourite cosplays I've ever done. And I have also done Rose Quartz from Steven Universe, and with Rose I actually did the, oh I forget the episode title, the one where she was wearing the Mr. Universe shirt, as you can see, mostly because I did a shit job on the bodice of the dress, but oh well. So. List number two out of three is sort of ideas of characters that you can do your own original twist on. 
So that means you can actually adapt the design to how it best suits your body, what feels flattering, what feels comfortable, and it really doesn't matter. And also because some of these characters aren't even human, no one can police it. No one can be like, Bulbasaur's meant to be skinny because Bulbasaur's a fucking like cactus on legs. And also for the record, I think Bulbasaur should absolutely be plus size. Like if anyone's doing like humanized, you know, Pokemon for cosplay, like you couldn't have a skinny Bulbasaur. It just doesn't feel right, honestly. Anyway, that actually leads me into point number one on this list, which is do the Pokemon. It's popular, it's recognizable. And again, you can do whatever you want with the design. There's always very um, recognizable elements for each of them. Um, for example, I did Mimikyu. It's not my greatest costume. I've actually thrown it out since because I was just like, yeah, no, this is not good. But hey, it's cute, it's recognizable, and it was something that I felt good in, and it was a design that I liked. Another couple of ideas uh, is, say, Minnie Mouse or Daisy Duck from, you know, the Disney universe, um, Lumpy Space Princess from Adventure Time, um, any of the Yordle characters from League of Legends. I mean, technically they're spirits that just take humanoid form, so... Again, why can't they be plus size? And then you could do things like, you know, Yoshi from like all the Super Nintendo Mario stuff. I mean, again, do you look at this character and go, oh yes, that should be a skinny lady? No, <laughs> or at least I don't. And so obviously, while this is a limited sampling, I think the whole idea of taking inhuman, well not inhuman, non-human characters gives you, as a plus size person, a lot of Room to experiment, room to make yourself comfortable, room to make yourself look good, while still being recognizable and fun. And because the thing is, if the character's not human, no one, no one has any more right than anyone else to tell you how you should do it or what your body should look like as you are doing it. Third and final, we have just a few general concepts I have in mind. So, first of all is the fact that even if you're cosplaying characters that are not plus size, there's a few things in designs that you can look out for that do tend to be more flattering on larger bodies. And that is things like, for example, princess dresses. The fact that they, you know, the, the shape has like the fitted bodice and then the flared out skirt, that tends to be flattering on basically every body type. And so I think that's generally the way to go if you're going to cosplay a non plus size character. However, like I said at the start, who cares if it's flattering? As long as you are having fun and enjoying dressing up as a character, who cares? Pick the most unflattering thing. Be the fat slave layer. I think it's great. Just do it. But as I said, this is aimed at people who maybe are a bit more self-conscious or do want to be a bit more accurate looking. So just, I keep repeating this because I don't want to come across as judgmental. I'm not judgmental. I'm plus size myself. I, I, I can't be judgmental without being a giant hypocrite, and I'm not a giant hypocrite, but realistically, you know, I'm doing this video for suggestions of if you want to do something that looks good while you're plus size, but who cares whether you look good or not, as long as you're having fun. I really hope that came across with what I mean. I'm gonna stop repeating myself now, but I hope you get the gist of what I'm saying, and if I don't, well, call me out in the comments, it's good for engagement. <laughs> Anyway, so on with the rest of this list. Um, another thing to do as a plus size cosplayer is to do sort of generic cosplays, like just be a Jedi or a Hobbit. You don't have to be a specific character, you just have to be a recognizable archetype of character. And again, like with the humanizing certain characters, that puts you in a position where you're not wrong because you're your own take on the thing, whatever the thing happens to be. And then on a similar note, Original characters. It's pretty popular these days to cosplay your D&D &D character. I'm planning on doing that too. Keep an eye out for that video. But, you know, if you, again, if you made it up, it's your thing. You, you are the only person who can say whether it's right or not. So why the heck not? So yeah, if you are a plus size female presenting person looking to get into cosplay, there's a whole bunch of ideas for you. Or heck, even if you're an experienced cosplayer, there's some ideas for you. You know, it might have just, you know, sparked something in your mind. I mean, I hope it has. But regardless, I hope if you are watching this, whether you're plus size or straight size or female or male or non-binary or anything else, regardless of who you are, if you want to cosplay, please cosplay. 
It is a heap of fun, it opens you up to all kinds of new experiences, and it's just awesome. And please don't ever let your size stop you. And until next time, bye bye!